My friends, it sounds like we have a thunderstorm coming in. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, an impromptu episode. I just wrapped up a video. I plan to film two today, just finished the first one, and I'm hearing thunder. It's about lunchtime, so I figured, hey, why not grab the camera, we'll set up a tarp real quick, and let's see what this weather does. Maybe it'll storm, maybe it won't. Based upon what I'm hearing right now, it sounds like a good sized storm is coming in. That thunder is sounding rather vicious. I better set up this tarp real quick. I don't think I have much time to waste. As you all could see, I set up the tarp. This thing is massive. This is a massive tarp. It offers a ton of protection. This is something that I keep inside of my truck all the time, just in case. We receive roughly 100 inches of rain per year, so it can rain basically at any time. You can tell that there's instability in the atmosphere. You can feel it. Today's rather hot, it's kind of humid. All of a sudden, I'm feeling cold air coming through. Let's take a second here and look at the radar. Let's see what's coming our way. There's a line of storms headed this direction right now. The sky is dark. Looks pretty nasty at the moment. So let me ask you all, what's new? As for myself, Susie and I, we just got back from our cross country trip. In fact, those videos, those episodes should be going up right now at the time of filming. And this video itself may go up during the middle of those episodes. Either way, folks, we had a fantastic time. The road trip was amazing. The backpacking trip was definitely one of my favorite of all time. We were off trail in the Utah desert. It was super, super hot. We had to use some natural shelter to protect us from the sun. Ultimately, we hiked a wash. We came upon an ancient waterfall, and then we climbed on top of a shelf, and that's where we camped. It was, without a doubt, incredible. It really was. We made it home about a week ago, and now it's all about getting caught up, right? We were on the road for roughly two weeks, so I'm about two weeks behind. So it's just a rush to get everything caught back up, emails, messages, videos, work, so on and so forth. Plus we have a ton of stuff that needs to be cleaned. Anytime that you go out on a road trip, you're going to experience some crazy things. On this trip, we didn't see a whole lot, but I definitely saw some interesting stuff. We just pulled into like Oklahoma, I think, and I don't remember the town, but there was a guy on a building like right next to the road and he did not care at all. That was rather interesting. Then um, we were in Arizona outside of the Grand Canyon. 
I have no clue what was going on, okay? But in this parking lot, there was two minivans. Both had their doors open, and in each minivan was a naked woman. I have no idea <laughs> what that was about. I don't know. They weren't too far away from the road, and as we drove by, we were both just staring like, what on earth is going on? Who knows? <laughs> all in all, it was a good trip, but I have to say I'm glad to be back to North Carolina. Back here at Lone Wolf Mountain, which is my favorite place in the universe. Here at Lone Wolf Mountain, everything makes sense, right? There's no venomous snakes. Yeah, we have quite a few predators, that's okay. As long as you know what you're doing, you can handle them fine. What I love about this place is all of the wildlife. We have buzzards flying overhead. We have turkeys in the forest, deer in the forest. A little while ago, I was hearing an owl. I just love that. Plus, <laughs> turkey. <laughs> Plus, everything up, turkey again. Everything up here is just covered in grass. The trees are leafing out. Everything is so green. Folks, check this out. A few moments ago, I was talking about hearing an owl. Well, I was walking down here to the truck. I hear a whooshing sound. I look over, and that owl is in the tree there. I mean, he's about 20 feet away, or he was 20 feet away. I was able to grab my phone and take a picture, but we just stood there for maybe, I don't know, just two minutes, like, staring at each other. It was incredible. In fact, it's made my day. <laughs> I don't know how well it's coming through, but it is absolutely pitch black towards the west here. As you can hear, the winds are picking up. It's rumbling thunder. And maybe here in a bit, it'll begin raining. All right, here we go, everybody. It is now raining. The storm is upon us. Let's take a look here at the radar real quick and let's see what's happening here. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. The storms have broken up, so there's no telling exactly what's going to happen. As it stands right now, this line of storms has fallen apart, but there's still showers and storms coming through the area. It's just impossible to tell what it's going to do. As it stands right now, the rain is light and it's lunchtime. Let's see. It's kind of funny, folks. The temperature today has just gone up and down so many times. As of right now, I would say it's about 60 degrees where maybe 30 minutes ago, it was about 74. This is the Helicon Tex wind shirt. Watch my review of this jacket to see just how different it is now compared to when I reviewed it. This jacket did not originally feature this zipper. It's an anorak. I'm personally not the biggest fan of anorak jackets because they're difficult to get on and off. Because of that, I decided to put a zipper in this. And that has absolutely taken this jacket from like an eight all the way up to a 10. I absolutely love it. Putting in the zipper was a very simple fix and also very inexpensive. A tailor in my town charged me $40 to do this modification and that includes the price of the zipper. And without a doubt, it took a great product and made it even better. Over the years, I can't begin to tell you all how many times I've set up a tarp real quick because storms are coming in and then everything just fizzles out. It happens all the time. Ugh. 
I'm hearing a little bit of rain. Not much. I'm still hearing thunder though. The storms that were approaching, not all of the cells have died off. So you can still hear thunder from our south and also thunder from our north. Lunch today is a sandwich and it looks like a turkey and cheddar sandwich. Made by the one and only Susie. Thank you, Susie. Let's see how it is. Anytime I'm out in the forest and it comes to like unpredictable weather, I listen to the birds. The birds are a fantastic indicator of what's coming. As you can hear right now, they're just singing away, and that's a good sign. That means there's no big storms coming in, at least not right now. If the forest was silent, we could be in trouble. I filmed one video already today. I have one more to do. These are some interesting products, folks. I have a Nature Hike pop-up tent, one of those like instant pop-up tents. It is the most impressive instant pop-up tent I've ever seen. Unfortunately, the tent, it's not perfect. It has problems. To me, it feels like the company had a certain budget for this tent and like to get it at that price, they had to cut some corners, right? So like the frame itself was probably the most expensive part. So they cut some corners as far as the materials go. So on the inside of the tent, it's covered in fabric, which is something that you do not want in a three season tent. And that's because the tent will perform like a fourth season tent. And in the hottest part of the summer, that is not what you want. You want airflow. You want to feel the cool breeze, but that tent is covered in so much fabric, you're not going to be able to feel the cool breeze. So we're talking about this one person tent that's very lightweight that sets up in literally two seconds, but that's too hot to use in the summertime, but yet is not a fourth season tent, has no guy line points. The product simply does not make any sense. So much for everything staying dry, folks. It's raining pretty good. It's windy, and it sounds like the thunder is getting closer. By the way, everyone, when it comes to the modification that I did to this jacket, this was not my idea. I had a viewer contact me, and I'll have to flash his name on the screen if I can find it. But he wrote in, and he shared this idea. He went to a tailor, had the zipper put in, and I thought it was a genius idea. good thing is, even though like everything being soaking wet is going to make my life more difficult, especially considering the fact that I have one more video to film, just in case you don't know this, Lone Wolf Mountain is where I do gear testing, and this is roughly 50 miles away from where I live. So I can't just drive out here, film one video, and go home. I will have to film more than that. Now luckily, I set up this tarp so I can film underneath it if I need to. The other video that I'm going to film is also a Nature High product. It is the vestibule for the Mongar 2. It looks really, really strange, folks. You basically attach it to the pole system of the Mongar and then put the fly over the top of it. My biggest question for this product is, like, how much space does it really give you? Is it space for gear? Is it space for only gear? Or is it big enough for a person or persons to go underneath it? The Nature Hike website shows a man sitting underneath it, but he doesn't look comfortable to me. So I don't know. It's one of those things where I'm not sure if this is really a well thought out product or not. We will find out soon enough whether or not it is.
you may be wondering, where's Bento? That's my Tundra, we call it Drifter. Bento is our Japanese Land Cruiser. Bento is at the house at the moment, but I have to say this. Bento has not gone over very well with Susie. Since it's a Japanese imported Land Cruiser, the steering wheel is on the right side of the vehicle. I have gotten used to it for the most part, but Susie has not. She does not like it. She likes the vehicle itself because it runs so good, it's super nice, but the right side drive, she does not care for. And because of that, I'm really confused. I'm not sure what to do with it because we can't have a vehicle that one person doesn't want to drive. That makes no sense. As it stands right now, Bento is a question mark. I'm not entirely sure what to do. A hard decision may have to be made. I just received a notification that says heavy rain starting in 15 minutes. So much for going back to work. I guess I'll just sit here and wait and see what happens. I'm not sure how well it's coming through, but there's a deer in the forest over here snorting away. They're not willing to go off and move. They're just gonna sit there and snort, I guess. As that wave was coming in, it disintegrated, but as it approached the mountains, has come over the mountains, it's firing back up again. I'll look at the weather one more time, try to come up with a plan here. More rain is definitely coming, but it doesn't look super, super heavy to me. And then behind that, it looks like it might clear up a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is just kick back and relax and wait it out. The sun does not go down until 8.18, so. By the way, folks, let me show you all something. I had a number of people write in saying that I gave away my location in previous episodes. And that's because like on the radar app that I showed on the screen, it said like, you know, whatever location. That is not accurate. I can set this for like any location that I want to. So that's basically what I've done. That's what I do. So let me show you all what I'm talking about. Hopefully you can see that. It says Damascus, Virginia, Elk Creek, Virginia, Bristol, Tennessee. I can set it for whatever I want it to say. And I can also set the little blue dot. Something that I have to do here with the channel is protect my privacy and the privacy of my family. Because the channel's gotten so large, you know, it's just something that has to be done. You may remember the old army truck in the past. I learned a lesson with having really, really unique vehicles. That lesson should be obvious. If you have a unique vehicle, people will see it. <laughs> I had people coming to my house all the time, and I love viewers, I love talking to everyone, but I don't like having anyone come to my house. That's not how I roll. That was one of the reasons why I got rid of that truck. But anyway, going back to the point here, yeah, just because it says London, Kentucky on this or, or whatever, that does not mean that I live there. That doesn't mean that's where I'm at. This is what I'm going to do, everyone. I'm going to say goodbye to you all for now. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to leave this tarp set up but I'm going to basically get prepared to start filming the second video. I really need to get that done before I go home. Like I said, it's just such a far drive. I don't want to waste my time out here. I have about four hours before the sun goes down, so hopefully I'll be able to film amongst those four hours dodging rain showers. But everyone, I want to thank you all very much for joining me for this impromptu episode. 
I know you all love the rain just as much as I do. Plus, I've been dying to talk with you all. I've been out on that road trip for numerous weeks, and I've missed making content. I've missed talking to you. It's good to be back, everyone. I'm ready to do some springtime, summertime camping. Unpredictable storms, strong storms. I'm ready. I'm also ready to begin preparing and planning for the next adventure, like big trip. Right now I'm thinking Japan. That'd be fun. It's something I've always wanted to do and now's the time. Anyways, everyone, thank you guys and gals for joining me. Hit the like button before you go. I do appreciate it. Take care, strength and honor, be well.